G'day guys, Kelvin, Catching Company in New Zealand, and I'm a little bit pissed off. I brought a, uh, an engine a, a little while ago, and it was a bit rough around the edges. No, it was more than that. It was, it had had a hard time. And I recently did a, just a little bit of a basic external prep. It was too dirty for me to work on, so I washed it. Um, I have just generally given it a check over, returned it back to the parts that should have been on it. Lift the wiring loom off it because he'd had a go at that and it wasn't quite like it should. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't the worst I've seen. And I've been wiring up a different ECU and doing a bit of a video series on that. And it turns out that it doesn't matter what the ECU is, if the engine's buggered, it doesn't really work very well. What I had, I'll go back in time a little bit. I, I fired it up and it was on four cylinders. <laughs> Some diagnosing on um, the other side. On the, the right hand side I had, uh, I just, when I was in a, in a rush, I grabbed a set of leads and banged it on and I hadn't traced every single lead through and double checked that they were on right. So I had two leads on the wrong way. So that gave it, gave it six cylinders. I came over to the left hand side and I had the back two cylinders not working. The other side was easy because they, it was pretty obvious that it was coming from the same point. Oh, and a stuffed coil. Makes a difference. Doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. It was kind of running on three cylinders. So stuffed coil, replaced coil. Two leads in the wrong way. Got that sorted. Then I came over to this side and in went some injectors on number five and seven. Bang, number five starts working. So we're down to seven, one cylinder left to go. So seven down, one to go. And if I really go back in time more, when we were first setting this up, when we we're turning it over, just that general feel, it didn't feel healthy. And often when you've got an engine that's been sitting for a while, doing a compression test dry, cold, on the ground, is a complete waste of time. I've done a heap of them. And often you fire them up and they come up just good. Just fine, no worries, no worries. Well this one's been up to temperature. And still nothing on that one. Yeah, that one there. I did a compression test on these ones and they all came up. And on, on this is the reading I got on number seven. Zero. Nothing. That, that might be an issue. Tap it comes, covers off and in go some feeler gauges. So this valve, that one stopped at about 0 0.3, which is still, still too big, outside spec, but this side, it just kept on going. And I might as well be using a screwdriver just about, because that's a massive gap. I haven't checked the exhaust side. We could probably go in like it is now. Nope. That feeler gauge won't fit under the exhaust at that point. Won't fit under there. What size is it? It's big anyway. There's, there's our issue. Oh, that's where I suspect the issue is, right there. Next thing to do is I'm going to do a bit of a cylinder leakage. Now I've got this tool here. I brought it years ago and it makes smoke. It's got a flow gauge and I turn it on. And it does nothing. We'll let it heat up just a little bit longer. 
The weather's just turned to crap, so we're going to get some residual noise, but I, I want to get this checked out. Well, there it goes. If I make smoke at a couple of PSI. That's number one. So I've got it so the, the lobes are up and the valves are completely closed. It's number one. On my flow gauge, no flow. All right, okay. Let's put it in here. You can see if I put it in here, it's got a leaky valve. You see that happens. It's leaking on this one because I've got valves open. Because I was turning it over. So I'll turn it again so the valves are closed. I'll just check I'm not crimping over my tool at the bottom there. Oh no, there we go. Look, look at that. Puffing out the intake. It's coming out of this spark plug hole as well. Look at that, there you go, so. So very, very quickly, I diagnosed that I've got a problem valve on number seven cylinder on the inlet side. It's probably a bit sticky, um, or it's had some shit on it, oh. or it's got, yeah, it's got carbon up the, the, the valve stem and so it's not shutting completely. Or a big bit of goop on the valve itself, um, on the valve stem. This one comes back to life when I give it a big rev, which is quite typical of a, of a leaky type valve because when you get it revving, it spends less time on its seat. So I'm gonna make a decision what I'm gonna do here. But this was meant to be test engine number two to give old yellow a bit of a break and it's a gen 2 engine so they are interference so if you get sticky valves like that sometimes the pistons give it the push it shut thing and we were turning it over it did have a little bit of a noise in this side so that was probably the noise it was probably the piston pushing that valve shut it's a bit of a bugger but that's what happens it's an old engine with this one i knew there was a risk it was it was pretty yucky and that's why I actually didn't do too much because I wanted to fire up and see what it was like. In the sump, I could see it was a, a bit yuck. This was the gunge from under the tappet cover. So it has been let go. But this is another reason why I do it here on the bench. And this stuff shouldn't take long to diagnose. It's not on working on one cylinder. I whipped injector drivers around, check spark, bang, compression test, done. And as I said, when we were turning over initially, it actually didn't have compression on other cylinders as well, but firing it up and getting it hot helped with those ones. See the cows look really scared when I'm running engines. They're quite used to me now. Luckily, I have very understanding neighbors, those fellas. So we've just got to work. I'm gonna fire this up. Jason's back after his weekend. And we'll see if he picks up what's up with this. I haven't told him. 
He's, he's now listening to this, so he is suspicious. But I'll, I'll give him about two or three minutes to diagnose what's up with it. I've actually dialed a little bit much cold start fuel out of it so far when I was playing around with the software. Stopped it. Yeah, you're on the right side. Something wrong on this side. You remember when we were turning it over? Oh, no compression. You know how it made the noise? You know, yeah. the chook chook. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Sticky valve or something. I'd say it's a bent valve myself. I reckon. I reckon we're going to have to pull this apart and fix it. <laughs> old, Not... yellow, old yellow seems a bit more reliable, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it didn't take him long to pick up it's on this side. He could hear it popping out the exhaust. He did the spark test. It's better when it's warm. It actually tests better, but there you go. Diagnosis, using his ears, and he revved it, came up in the revs. It actually seems to clear. Kind of points towards the valve, so it's not bad. I still under leakaged it. Number, number seven's definitely got a leakage through the inlet valve. No. So inlet valves don't normally burn. They normally bend. If anything. Oh, it's sticky. Yeah, I tried to give it the unstickiness. Didn't work. So yeah. the the Because Kelvin's pretty slicky. <laughs> Thanks. I got some work to do. Um I I might just be swapping back to old yellow for the moment because I know old yellow's reliable. And we might do a video on either pulling the heat off it or Yeah, it's gonna be probably pulling the heat off it, unfortunately. Not quite what I planned at all. Going to be it for another day. Um, I think I might just bang it back together for now. And I want to check oil pressure as well. Put an oil pressure gauge up it. The oil pressure is good. We'll pull the heads off it. We'll have a look at those valves. Um, I've got some spares. And we can uh, check it over and put it back together. But that's for another video. I hope that was somewhat helpful. We'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later. How's that? Missing a lung. The other one cylinder still sits in idles. <laughs>